Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So inshallah we are going to start uh, today the second part of Surah Az-Zalzala. I think that we stopped last time uh, at the verse number uh, six. I'm, I mean today we are going to start with verse number six. يَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسُ وَشْتَاتًا So we are going to recite inshallah together and then we will uh, give the tafsir and the translation later on. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yawma idhi yasduru al-nasu ashtatan liyuraw a'malahum. أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره Allah, we're going to start now. The direct translation of uh, this, which is يَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا لِيُرَوْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ The direct translation is that, that day, the people will depart, separated into categories to be shown the result of their deeds. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى So, whoever does an atom's weight of good will see it. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَى And whoever does an Adam's weight of evil will see it. Actually, uh, it's like three ayat, three verses, but they are having a very deep meaning. And as we are going to see and explain, inshallah, how much that these three simple ayat, apparently to be simple ayat, but actually they are having an intense meaning and very deep meaning. Let's start with this. First, we want to connect it with what we have explained before and with the previous verses that already we have explained before. Because as we said, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give an oath, and this is the beginning of this surah, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not oath, it is إِذَا زُلْزِلَةِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَلَهَا There is no oath here, sorry. But whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starting thing with a condition like this then we said last time that we have like three four verses and then we are waiting for the result the consequences what are the consequences for this إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزلها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يوم إذن now starting you know we call it جواب الشرط which is يوم إذن تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أوحى له and after that what else in that day يوم إذن again يصدر الناس أشتاد so, يوم إذن, as we said, it is the, the day, the time. That day, okay? يوم إذن. And actually, it, it has been, according to Tariq ibn Ashur, it has been like, supposedly, to be like this. يصدر الناس أشتاتا يوم إذن, for example. But we have given, or يوم إذن has been given the priority in the verse to place emphasis upon it, okay? On that day, on that day, whenever that I make a conversation with, with you, and I'm, I'm going to warn you, or I'm going to tell you there's something important. So I'm going to tell you tomorrow, I'm going to do this with you. Tomorrow, I'm going to have this with you, right? Similar here. يَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا لِيُرَوْ أَعْلَامُ يَصْدُر يَصْدُر in Arabic, in Arabic in general, يَصْدُر, uh, it is the opposite of الصُدُور uh, عَكْسْ uh, الْوُرُود. Whenever that the people come to some place to water, you know, in general, whenever the people are gathered in one place, and especially in the Arab times or in the, uh, you know, in the ancient times, they used to gather on a well, where is the source of water there, and then they are going to what? To water their, themselves and their uh, sheep and animals and so on. So whenever the people are coming to this place, we call it wurud, warada. And whenever they are done with it, and they are finishing, or they finished already, then they are making what we call it sudur, sadara, 
yazdurun. Then they already have been gathered and then they are going to depart from this. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving or using the same word which is sudur, yazdur. Yazdur means what? There are two different meanings here according to the ulama. Whenever that we are going to be buried in our graves, okay, this is considered, this is the first meaning, this is considered to be wurud, that we are being gathered to the same place which is inside the soil, inside the earth. This is wurud. And after that, in the day of judgment, what will happen? Sudur after that, that the people would come out from their graves, okay, and they are going to the place of the recompense, makan al hisab Okay, so this is the first meaning. And actually this is not, some of the ulama, they do not, uh, you know, they have some, uh, some objection regarding this. But anyway, other ulama, they say this might be happen, or this might be the meaning. And it's logic. Okay. The second meaning is, yazdur means that the people would, after being gathered for al hisab you can imagine this situation in the Day of Judgment, that the people have been gathered for al hisab for the recompense. And after that, everyone knows, or at this moment, everyone knows that he should go to the left or to the right, which is al-mu'minun wal-kafirun, for example, or usat al-mu'minin, <coughs> and those who, are, who were the righteous people. Then the people would, what? Would categorize into categories. Some good people, and even the good people, they are not in the same category. They are going to be categorized. And for the Others, or the not good, or the non-believers in general, they are going to be categorized. And then they are going to what? Yazdurun. Means that they are going to depart from the place of the recompense to other place where that they can see their recompense or to see whatever written for them. Because here, Yazdurun nasu ashtatan, we are going to talk about liyuro a'malahum, we are going to talk about it. But now let's concentrate in the word Yazdur. Yazdurun. Okay, so this is the meaning of the report. So you can now bear in your mind that we have two different meanings. And as we said, whenever that we understand the Quran, it's very important for us to imagine and perceive the situation so that you can, you can, you can resonate with it. But if we just read the translation, give the explanation, and give the different opinions, maybe we are distracted with this. But the main important thing is what? To imagine the situation. Can you imagine yourself when that you are about to go to some place and there is kind of what the result of what you have done for the exams, for example, or for the work that you have done, whether that it has been a failure or not, whether that you're going to be successful or not, whether you're going to be accepted in the job or not. Do you feel this meaning or do you, can, can you recall these time, these moments where that you are highly from deep inside psychologically, you are highly paired with this situation, that you are waiting for something. You do not know what will happen for you. This is the same. يَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَصْدُرُ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا النَّاسُ, الناس it is the plural word as we said, all the people, believers and non-believers, مُؤْمِنُونَ وَكَافِرُونَ يصدر الناس أشتاتا أشتاتا means that they are جمع شتى بفتح الشين وتجديد الفوقية وهو المتفرق والمراد يصدرون متفرقين جماعات they are going to be different categories أشتاتا they are not in the same place whenever that you see the people and سبحان الله whenever that you link it with the beginning of the surah إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزلها what what happened when the people or when the earthquake uh, stroke and area. What what happened for the people? Yeah, they are dispersed in what? In every direction, right? So you cannot control. Some people go to the left, some people go to the right, other people go here, other people go there, right? Similar here. Yawma idin. Look to this, you know, this this link between the, the ayat and the coherence of the ayat. Yawma idin yasdurun nasu ashtata. In categories, they are different. جماعات متفرقين جماعات كل إلى جهة بحسب أعمالهم وما عين لهم من منازلهم ليروا أعمالهم ليروا أعمالهم ليروا here it is ليروا as we said before it is in Arabic we can use the active form or the passive form 
Liura here, it is passive form. In order to see, in order to let them see. So they are not going to, you know, they are not going to see it by themselves. It seems as if that there is some, for example, some angel or something that is going to bring you or bring the person and let him see what's there, whether it is the recompense, means that your place or seat from the paradise or hellfire or the written recompense that you are going to be here or you are going to be there. So this is the meaning here. Liura means that you are going to, to be seen or allowed to see your deeds. And again, stop here and think about this. Whenever you did something wrong, okay, especially for those who already committed something that is severely wrong, like someone killed someone, for example, okay, or murdered him, or did a great sin. Okay. Can you imagine this whenever, and sometimes in the courts, and whenever there is investigations and so on, they what? They bring the, the person who assassinated the other person or the person, the killer, for example, and say, do you see this is the, uh, the pre, for example, this is the, the person that you have killed, right? Can you imagine what, psychologically also, can you imagine what happened for the person, that, that the person that he was the killer? He is like highly moved with what he is being seen at that moment, even that he killed him. Maybe he is start to cry or to weep, start to regret, start to show that he was, he did or he, he had done something that is really something that is wrong and something that he couldn't imagine himself to do it, right? So this is the point here, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only bringing the people and let them see it and no, no, no. It is here, I'm going or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to bring the people, going to let them see it. And psychologically, you are going to regret whatever that you've done. Okay? And psychologically, you are going to understand what you have done before and how that you have spent a lot of time, for example, in things that is really was not uh, considered to be right. This is the meaning here. And here, some of the ulama, they mention that there is a hadith for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That ma min ahadin. There is no one on the day of judgment and he is going to allow to see his rewards or his recompense in general, whether it's good or not, except that he is going to regret. So the person who already did wrong things, he is going to regret what? Regret the wrong and sinful actions that he has done. And for the good people, they are going to regret as well. Because they are going to say to themselves that we should have done more. We should have increased this amount. Because at that time you are going to see and realize really that dunya, it has n really even the weight or the atoms, weight or the feather of a, uh, a kind of a fly. Even if you think about it as little as this much, then you are going to realize that the dunya has nothing uh, and uh, no, or we can say that it would not bring you happiness at a time where that really you are seeking the happiness there. Okay, so it is passive. First of all, a'malahum. They are going to see, allowed to see their rewards. And here, liyurau uh, a'malahum al-a'mal. There are two different. Uh, before going al-a'mal, ru'ya. The ulama, they have different opinions regarding a ru'ya. A ru'ya, it could be ru'ya basariya or ru'ya ilmi. Ru'ya basariya means that by your eyes. Whenever that, at this time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would let them see their recompense. A ru'ya here, maybe basariya, maybe they are going to see it by their eyes. Okay? And there is another type of a ru'ya. We call it a ru'ya ilmiya, which is to understand. Okay? Even that in English we use it. Whenever that you say something to me and I understand it, I could say for you, I see. Right? I see here means what? I understand you. But we have used the word see in order to let you know that I have understood. Right? Similar here. A ru'ya here, it's very important. A ru'ya here, it has the two meanings. Some ulama, they have 
said that it's only ru'ya basariya, that means that by your eyes, visualizing it. But other ulama, like Tahir ibn Ashur and other ulama, they said that it is ru'ya basariya or ilmiya, that you are going to see it and you are going to what? Understand. Because it's very important also here. Some, some people can be accused with a crime. Okay? And then at the end, in the courtyard, for example, they couldn't understand why they have been accused and why they are going to be sent to jail, right? And they are going to claim that we are innocent, for example. No, no, no. In the Day of Judgment, it will not, will not happen like this. You are going to see it, and you are going to understand it, and you are going to submit to it that it is right. There is no oppression there. So here, this is the meaning of liuraw. Okay, ar-ru'ya ilmiya wa basariya. Both of them. To understand and to see it. Professor. Yes. Ama. Yes. I know that ama yes. means walk in Arabic. Okay. Amal. 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 Yes. Amal. 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 Means walk. Work. Yes, that's walk right. In yes, that's right. Okay. Is it of? Is it is it interpreted as? A walk? Yes, your deeds and actions. That's right. Mm -hmm. It is the meaning here. It is right. Yuraw amalahum. Amalahum. Their deeds and their actions. Mm -hmm. And Al-Amal here, they said that you are going to see the deeds itself or you are going to see the recompense. And there is a difference between the two. The recompense means that you are going to see, A'malo means that jaza'u a'malihim, means that you are going to see whether the seat in, your para, in the paradise or the seat in the hellfire. But you are not going to see your, your deeds there. And other ulama, they said, no, you are going to see the uh, you know, the, the a'mal only, that this is what you have done, this is what you have uh, uh, done with this person, this is the wrong transaction that you have done, and so on. But actually the two, as long as we said before, as long as there is no evidence for making a specific meaning, then we should take it as general. Okay? So al-a'mal, maybe a'mal uh, or jazail a'mal, the deeds or the recompense of the deeds. Okay? Liyuraw a'malahum. And after that, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ فَأْهِرْ لِلْتَفْرِيعَ And we call it, they call it تَفْرِيعَ الْفَذْلَكَةِ الْفَذْلَكَةِ here means that the summary. Whenever that you are saying something, okay, for a long time, or you are giving a speech, for example, at the end you want to give a summary so that the people would understand and the people would always bear it in their minds. Easy to remember, okay? This is what we call il fa here for. Fa man ya'mal. This is fa at tafriya, and we call it, according to Tawil ibn Ashur, also he said al fadlaka, means that the summary, the letter used for the summary. Intiqalan lit targhibi wa targhibi ba'd al faraghi min ithbat al ba'thi wal jaza. After we have confirmed there is resurrection and there is recompense, then what will happen? That is intiqal, we call it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the ayat is shifted to what? Targhib wa targhib. Okay? Targhib wa targhib. Because again, whenever that the people are being addressed with some speech, unless that you address them personally, then they are not going to be alerted. Okay? Here, the ulama, they said that, and actually this, this uh, nice, uh, nice tip, it has been mentioned by Fi uh, Adwa'il uh, Bayan, uh, Sheikh Shankiti, he mentioned about this. And actually, I haven't seen other commentator mention about this, which is, he said, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ يَعْمَلْ here, it is, we call it, as he mentioned, it is iltifat. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the ayat is giving us a meaning, okay, for different stages of al-akhirah. And after that, it directs you, it addressing you, it is addressing you now. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ Whosoever is going to do something good, he is going to see it. Whosoever amongst you going to do something wrong, wrong or Adam's weight of wrong or evil deed, he is going to see it. This is addressing the people. We call it iltifat in, in Arabic. Iltifat means that that is shifting from like, like if, as if it is, was about the third person and then iltifat shifting or transferring to the uh, the first person that as if I'm addressing you, okay, warning you. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ 
And man hun, huna shartiya, it's conditional. Whosoever is going to make an atom's weight, mithqal. Mithqal, uh, mithqal actually in, in Arabic it's used for whenever that you are weighing something, then you are putting in, there are two, you know, there are two lids here. You put some, something, vegetables or something here, and you are putting here mithqal, a weight. Okay, this is what we call it mithqal. Okay, and it's used for here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used it mithqala dharra. Mithqala dharra. Dharra means in Arabic, in ancient Arabic, it means that a dharra hiya sagirun namr, which is the smallest ant that you could see. Okay, and they said that a dharra, it means that whenever that you are striking the ground, for example, and there is some, you know, some fibers are flying there, you can see it in the sun rays, right? This is what we call it dharr. This is what the Arab know and understand from this. Okay? I'm going to talk about dharra now in Arabic. Dharra means that atom, and we have a kind of scientific configuration for the atom, which is the, there is a, a nucleus there, and there is uh, some electrons and protons and this stuff, right? Actually here, the meaning here is not related to the scientific configuration, because Quran is not related to this point. Some people would say that if your Qur'an is telling that this is the atom, then we have discovered something that is less in terms of the weight and volume of the atom, which is the electron, for example, or maybe something less than this. So actually here, whenever Allah is giving an example, like atom's weight, it doesn't mean the atom's weight. It means what a limit that you and I can use always in our daily life. Okay? For example, if I say to you that I'm going to pay you every penny that you have given to me. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that um, if there is something less than that, than that, I'm not going to give. No, I'm going to give, okay, everything, everything. So here it's a limit that is commonly used, okay? We are not using it as a specific weight because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used it in another place, in another place also with wala aqalla min dhalika. وَلَا أَقَلَّ مِنْ ذَلِكَ In other verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the same with the dharra. And then he said, وَلَا أَقَلَّ مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَلَا أَكْبَرَ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ And there is nothing less than the atom or larger than the atom unless that is going to be recorded. So here, this is the meaning. مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ This is the dharra. خَيْرًا يَرَى And I want to give more here about the uh, about the understanding of the the ayat whenever there is dharra here is used okay of course definitely you are going to understand that if you have something bigger then supposedly you are going to be uh, having re- re- recompense of it right and this is the ulama al-usul they call it mafhum al-khitab okay there is this is important ruling in the in usul Usul al-fiqh and also in Usul al-tafsir to understand it. Sometimes we use some words that is, whenever we use it, it means that we are going to mention the word, but we are not going to mention some words that is going to be understand by you. Okay? No need to mention it. We call it we call it mafhum al muwafaq Okay? There are two types of understanding whenever that we write some sentence, especially in the Qur'an. There is mafhum al-muwafaqa and mafhum al-mukhalafa. Mafhum al-muwafaqa means that the understanding of the thing that is already common sense and it is in the same category of what I have mentioned in the phrase. Okay? Like this, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يرى. Who is going to make the atom's weight of good deed? This means that the mountain of good deeds, of course, it is going to be. This is called mafhum al-muwafaqa. The understanding of something that hasn't been mentioned in the ayah, but we could understand it. And mafhum al muwafaqa we can, this type, we call it fahwa al khitab, means that the atom of the weight or the atom's weight is something very small. Something larger, as, as we said, the mountains, for example, then it is something larger. We call it fahwa al khitab, something larger than what we have mentioned in the phrase. Sometimes we can make it as as similar as it is. I mean, as similar as the first mentioned word. Okay? 
ان الذين ياكلون ان الذين ياكلون اموال اليتامى ظلما انما ياكلون في بطونهم نار that those who are taking the wealth and properties of the orphans okay taking it then they are going to take as if they are going to take some part of the hellfire in their abdomen then here the meaning is what if the person is taking it for himself taking the orphan wealth for himself but if what if that that person he already for example burn the wealth or the property of the orphan he didn't use it actually here it is the same because again the same damage will happen for the wealth of the orphan so we call it the same here this is what we call it lahn al khitab okay lahn al khitab so whenever there is something higher we call it fahwa al khitab or whenever that we have something in the same category we call it lahn al khitab and both of them called mafhum al muwafaqa okay professor yes atoms mean atoms is small smallest material material yeah and can i can i can i interpret can i interpret as a small small things such as for example if you if i if if you um, if you want to be a success in in the world mm -hmm. then you have to be follow, you have to we have you have to follow small things such as um, such as for example mm -hmm. um, Um, give a seat to the elder, elders in the transportation mm -hmm. as a, or cleaning my room instead of instead of my mom mm -hmm. and it's very small things yeah and can i interpret yeah yeah that's right any small deed that you could imagine you are going to be held accountable for it and you are going to have the reward of it even that what you have mentioned here these examples are okay anything <coughs> And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sallam wala tahtiranna min al-ma'roofi shay'an That even that a smile in the face of your friend, it is considered to be a good thing. Even shakku tamra means that the, the half of a date, it is considered to be a small deed, but it is going to be a reward for you. So this is here, the ulama, they mention about this, that there are a lot of ahadith, Ibn Kathir, he mentioned many ahadith regarding this. Okay, so that, yes. Actually, some deeds are also mentioned in the, in the Quran. Mm -hmm. These are the very uh, bad deeds, and these are some very best deeds. Yes. So, uh, means, uh, uh, my question is that what kind of uh, things uh, that make uh, uh, amal action uh, very uh, high, mm -hmm. means uh, in, in, a, in a very, very best, uh, or in very bad? Ah, uh, yes. And yet, through uh, Saniyat, and the action as i understand these yes. are two things or there are so many are so actually in an al mizan there is nothing would be very heavy more than al khuluq al hasan which is the good morals as according to the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so your good morals this is the first thing uh, what you are talking about in niyyah and so on this is ruk this is kind of a pillar if whatever that you are doing is should have two main things in order to qualify it to be good deed. Okay? The first one is niyyah, which is the, we call it al-ikhlas wal-mutaba'ah. Ikhlas means that to have niyyah. You are doing it for the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is number one. If you are doing it for other person, or uh, remember that you can, I can do you a favor. Okay? I'm, I'm doing the favor for you. But actually I'm asking and seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This I'm going to be rewarded. But if I'm going to make a favor for you, and I'm waiting for a favor also from you back to me, then I'm not going to be, to have anything regarding my a'mal. Okay? So this is something that is important. This is number one, which is the niyyah. The other one is al-mutaba'ah. Al-mutaba'ah means that to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we need to follow this tradition of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in order to be accepted. If we are going to invent or to do some bid'ah in any type of action of ibadah or sadaqah or salah or siyam or zakah, then it will not be accepted. These are the two pillars. What will make it very heavy in the scale? Of, yeah, there are a lot of things. And as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that al-khuluq al-hasan. This is the first and this is, or this is the heaviest thing in, in, the, in the scale. There is one thing, there is one claim that I want 
I want to mention here, which is important also. And this is a question for you. Because again, remember that the tafsir, this is the beauty of the tafsir. That you are going to find everything in it. So shortly we were talking about usul fiqh in it, which is mafhum al-muwafaqa, mafhum al Now we are going to talk about something related to al-aqidah, which is the question is, if, if we are claiming that there is uh, Adam's weight of good deed and Adam's weight of bad deed, then this means that the kuffar should have, if they are doing good things, for example, then it's going to be counted for them in the day of judgment. Okay? And this is actually what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in one, in one ayah. And whatever that they are going to do from good deeds, they are not going to be denied for this. They are going to be accepted for this. So actually this is the claim that we want to understand. Do you think in the day of judgment at this time, whosoever going to make an Adam's weight of good, he is going to see it. And whosoever going to make an Adam's weight of evil, he is going to see it. This is for believer and non-believer, or for some people, and other people will not be accepted for this. What do you think about this? Or let me put the question like this. If an unbeliever did something good, is he going to be rewarded for this? Yes or no? Yes? Mm -hmm. In dunya? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes? I have read somewhere that, for example, uh, like you mentioned earlier, that there are various stages of, or various levels of the uh, hellfire. Yes, and then, yeah, so okay. Maybe, so maybe, like what you are saying about that, their deeds will be, good deeds will be counted in that way that they will be in a higher rank, rank than the of other. Of Mm -hmm. that's what I mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Actually, these are the two things that you mentioned. It is, it is right, actually. And this means that you already have understood uh, this <laughs> class good. And this is actually important for us because some people, they are highly... This is considered to be a kind of confusion for many people. Okay? They said that we have a lot of people have done some good deeds in Dunya, like Mother Teresa, for example, Gandhi, and so on. They are non-Muslims. They are doing and they did a great deal for the humanity and so on. Are they going to be in the paradise? Uh, and their deeds would qualify for, for them for the paradise? And actually this question, as I said, take care of these kind of questions. You need to understand the question whether it's right or wrong. And you need to understand whether it is in the right place or not. First, first I want to mention something before mentioning your, your answers. Do you remember when I said that the Sahaba, when they were with Rasulullah and they were asking him about Dukhul Jannah, about entering the paradise, and he said what? There is no one would enter the paradise except, except what? Except yes, with the mercy of Allah. And they asked him what after that? Do you remember the hadith? He said that even you, even you Rasulullah, he said what? Even me. Even me. Even me, I will not be qualified for what? For paradise unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what? يَتَغَمَّدَنِي بِرَحْمَتِهِ Means that plunge me in His mercy first. This means what? The deeds of the best of the best of the people would not qualify them for paradise. the paradise unless we have the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this means what? I always give this example as you are in the... And actually this happens with me. That with the students, whenever that you mark the students, you'll find some students, they, for example, they got like 20 out of 100. Okay? And other people, 10 out of 100. Surely they are what should take F, for example. Okay? But because they have some special case, they were trying to do a lot of things. They will, were putting a lot of effort in the class. They were trying to do all the assignments. They have done every effort possible in order to qualify or to pass this class. Then based on this, yes, we can let them to pass. Okay? This is similar situation. Okay? And to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-mathal al-a'la, the exalted example to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is number one. There is no one, this is very important, there is no one deserve paradise. Okay? This is the rule. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us in His mercy and plunge and put the mercy upon them, upon us. 
The next point is your, your, your answers. Is what first, if the person, if the person is doing good deeds, he will be rewarded with these good deeds in dunya. Okay? He can walk, he can see, he can eat, he enjoyed the fruits, he enjoyed the vegetables, he was enjoying with his, with his sons and daughters, mother, father, and so on. These are what? Blessings. But we do not count. Okay? Look to the question. The first is, if the non-believer did good deeds, is it going to be granted paradise? The question before that should be, what about with the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the non-believer? Did he count it? No, he didn't. He didn't count it. So he put some part of the question away and concentrated on one part. This is important in the logic point of answering these kind of questions. Okay? So first, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him a lot of blessings. Every, every atoms of good deed that the non-believer did in dunya, he already see it in dunya. And this is actually what the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said here. In Allah, in Allah, this is in Muslim. Okay? He said, In Allah la yazlimu minan hasanatan yu'ta biha fi dunya wa yujiza biha fi al-akhira. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with the mu'min. That if the mu'min is did something good in dunya, he is going to be rewarded in dunya. And he is going to be recompensed in the akhirah for this good deeds. On the other hand, وَأَمَّا الْكَافِرُ فَيُطْعَمُ بِحَسَنَاتِ مَا عَمِلُ فَيُطْعَمُ بِحَسَنَاتِ مَا عَمِلُ But the non-believer, he is going to be feeded in dunya with the good deeds that he has done in dunya. حَتَّى إِذَا أَفْضَى إِلَى الْأَخِرَةِ Until that he reaches to the hereafter, لَمْ تَكُنْ لَهُ حَسَنَةِ يُجِزَى بِهَا There is no reward for him to be recompensed with in the day of judgment. This is the hadith in Sahih Muslim. So it's very clear for us. And the other part is, this is in, in dunya. In the akhirah, as our brother mentioned, that there is categories of people also. So we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would not put the non-believers who were like very severe and was, were very op opponent to Islam, for example, or who killed many people, like Hitler, for example. Okay? Millions of people have been killed because of him. Okay? And Mother Teresa, for example, she was doing every possible deed for the humanity. Then definitely they are not going to be in the same level. Okay? Even the most near and close person to Rasulullah, who? Who was the, uh, the closest person? Yes, his uncle. His uncle, he was an unbeliever. And he didn't enter Islam, and he didn't embrace Islam. But again, he will be in the hellfire. Okay? But he will be in, in yes, in the highest rank, as is if we could say it. And there is, as Rasulullah ﷺ mentioned, that there is a kind of like boiling water underneath his, you know, uh, feet. That is yaghli minha rasu. That his his head is going to boil from. It. Even that this is his uncle, and he was the great support for Rasulullah in the beginning of this da'wah. But again, at the Day of Judgment, if that the person is not doing it for the sake of Allah, then he will not be rewarded. And this is what Sayyidah Aisha mentioned. Actually, Professor, about, yes? About the, the non-believer. As, as you said, really, uh, there is no one like sure he's going to paradise. But in the English, like the non-believer, they will not go to paradise. This is like sure or not? Ah, uh, yes. They can't enter in the mercy of uh, no, 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 no. They won't enter the paradise. That's, that's important. Yes, this is important also. That for the believers in general, if the person said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, it's a card for him. Even that he did sinful actions. He is going to purify it in the, in, the, in the hellfire. Okay? Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, then he can enter him the paradise. This is the Mashia, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How long? We do not know. Okay? But for the non-believers, no. They will not be entered the paradise from day one. Yes. Sir, um, I, I don't remember the actual chapter of the Quran, but maybe it's in the first third of Quran. And, and there, uh, God talks about three groups. Ah, yes. And like, for example, one is like explicitly believers and explicitly yes. non-believers. And then there's this one group. Uh -huh. And Al-Baqarah also, and uh, in, uh, I think that in verse 62, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا 
ان الذين امنوا والذين هادوا والصابئين من امن بالله واليوم الاخر right من امن بالله yes there are two surahs can you bring it please this is in surah al-baqarah verse 67 or something can you check this please 67 or 62 something like this Mm -hmm. 62 right okay yes 62 Yes, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ هَادُوا وَالنَّصَارَى وَالصَّابِئِينَ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَلَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Yes, that's right. What is the meaning of this? The meaning actually, the, the English translation like this. Those who are believing in Allah and the, the Jews, الَّذِينَ هَادُوا وَالنَّصَارَى The Christians, والصابئين. Sabi'ah means that there are two interpretations for the Sabi'ah. Sabi'ah means that the worshippers of the stars or sabi means that who departed from one religion and goes into another. Okay, departed from one uh, religion and he went to another religion. Sabi'in. Man amana billahi wal yawm al akhir wa amila salaha. Who believed in Allah and the day and the last day wa amila salihan and did righteous deed. Falahum ajruhum inda rabbihim. They are going to have their rewards in their Lord or at their Lord. Wala khawfun alayhim wala hum yahzanun. And there is no fear upon them. Actually, here the meaning according to Ibn Kathir and Tabari and Qurtubi, okay, and Jalali and Tahir ibn Ashur, all of them regarding this verse, okay, they said it like this that in the Ladina Amanu, here the meaning is those who are going to do the good deeds and entered the Islam. So in the Ladina Amanu, they are Muslims, okay, and while Ladina had one Nasara or Sabi'in, whoever from all of them. They accepted Islam and did the good deeds, then they are going to have the reward. But it does not mean that inna ladina amanu means that the Muslims and the non-Muslims, if they did good deeds, then they are going to enter paradise. No. The condition for ladina had wa nasara wa sabi'in is to have or to say la ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. This is the meaning. Mm -hmm. Man amana, yes, man amana. And the point is, the ulama, they said that it's a claim actually. They said that if, if they said man aman, why Allah started in the amanu? Because in the amanu, already they have iman. Why Allah is, is mentioning about this? And the ulama, they said that in the amanu, already have iman and increasing, they should increase their iman. So this is the meaning of, uh, of it. Okay. Okay, so this is verse 62. And another one similar to it, in, uh, maybe in, in, in uh, Al-Araf. No, this is in Tawb. Ah, you are me? You, al 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 yes, yes, yes. Actually, there is uh, categories even in paradise also. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like, that's right. Uh, yes, that's right. Whenever that, in, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in the Quran mentioned that in, in Jannah, there are, you know, the pinnacle is al firdaus al-A'la. This is the pinnacle. And there are some other paradises, different levels, based on our deeds and actions. So this is, you know, Allah is the just regarding this. Hadu means Yehudi. Alladina mm hadu, -hmm. yes. Alladina hadu means the Jews. Alladina hadu. Because they said, Inna hudina ilayk. This is the main, the main reason for it, this mean. Inna hudina ilayk. This is in the Quran also. Hudna means that we have like come back to you again to Allah. Yes, that's right. This is clear because in Allah that Allah is going to judge among us them in the day of judgment. But this ayah, which is verse 62 in in uh, in Al Baqarah and the other one 69, I guess also in Surah Al Araf or so, they are giving you know like maybe there are a little bit confusion for some people to understand. But unless that you understand, as I said, Ibn Kathir, Tabari, Qurtubi, all of them, they are giving this meaning. Okay? This is some people who are going to make it like contemporary understanding of the Quran. They said that, well, whenever that you are a Muslim and whatever you are Muslim or non-Muslim, both are okay if you did good deeds. But actually, this is not right. So this ayah will be according to the context of the conditions at the time of the Yes. That maybe Jews and yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So Allah clarifies that no, your religion that 
the Lord suffice you, no, you should be in Muhammad. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's very true. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned also about this regarding the categories of Ahlul Kitab, the people of the book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laysu sawa min Ahlul Kitab ummatun qa'imatun yatluna ayat Allahi, ayat Allahi, ana al layli wa hum yasjudun. That from the people of the book, they are not going to be the same. Some of them, they are reciting the verses of Allah in the hours of the night. And here the meaning is, at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلَنْ يُكْثَرُوا Whatever the good deed they are going to do, they are not going to be denied. The meaning here also, those who were from the people of the book and embraced Islam, like Abdullah ibn Salam. Okay? Yes. So, there is no meaning in the Quran, you will not find it, that the people of the book, whether the Jews or the Christians, if they didn't accept Islam, and they stayed on whatever belief they have, it will not be accepted. Okay? This is clear for uh, first. Professor? Yes. Does this, does this, uh, does this article, uh, article reflect that the Islam mm -hmm. is tolerant of other religions? Is tolerant? Yes. Jews, Christians, and Sabines? And Sabians, yes, that's Sabians. right. Yes. Believes in one God. Is it, he, is it correct? Yes, but here the, 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 the meaning is yes, Islam is tolerant with other religions in order to <clears throat> to let them to let them know and accept Islam. But but it is not right. What I can say to you that whenever the other people if okay, let me give you this example. If you are going to see your friends okay, going into a trench and they are going to fall into it, what you are going to say and to do for them? Trench? Uh, 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 what we call it? A hole or a tear? Or a cliff? A cliff, yes. If they are going to fall from a cliff, what you are going to do for them? You will accept them falling down the cliff? I have to catch him and say, don't commit this kind of extreme things. Yeah, that's right. That's very true. Yes. Similar in Islam also. Whenever the person is not believing in Allah and not believing in Islam, then he is actually doing something bad for himself. He is wronging himself. Then our, our attitude toward him is say to him, what you are doing, what you are believing in is wrong. And try to go to the right path. This is what Islam is doing. So actually, you are talking about the, uh, you know, the uh, living point of view, which is we want to live in the same place peacefully. And Islam is okay for this. Islam accept, Actually, Islam accepts the Jews and the Christians to live among the Muslims in, in the Muslim territories. This is common. But the point is, it does not mean that Islam accepts the religion itself as it is right. No, Islam knows that the other religions... They are not right because they are not worshipping or they are not going to reach Allah in the proper way. But we can live peacefully, yes, in dunya. Okay? So That's the meaning. So final objective is, is rightness. Yes. Yes, yeah, the right, righteousness. That they should do the right thing in order to enter the paradise. Then can I can I interpret it that all, regard, regardless of any other religions? Yes, regardless of whatever religion that you have, if you if you leave this religion and entered Islam and did good deeds, then you are going to be the paradise. Okay. But if you didn't go to Islam, you are not going to be accepted. It's it's a condition. It means that Jews and Christians have to become Muslims yes. first to, to enter paradise. Yes. If they don't become Muslim, then they do not. One of the point is, yes. Islam is started from Thank our you. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Yes, that's right. Made. So before uh, our Prophet came, Muslim. yes, uh, uh, most people who follow that, yeah, that's right. They, they are right. Yeah, yeah. The, you mean the Jews and the Christians, uh, right? They, they, they were right. Actually, there are some parts, or we can say some individuals of them were right, who were on the right scripture of 
uh, or the, the right understanding of the scripture. I mean that the Jews and the Christians, when they deviated from the right path, they started to make some, you know, uh, kind of falsification in the books. So most of them, they deviated from the right path until the uh, prophethood, prophethood of Rasulullah at this point, all the Jews and Christians, with some few exceptions, okay, they, they were not on the right path. So we can say like this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent Jesus and Moses, okay, in order to let the people know the right path. But the, you know, the priests and those who are uh, leaders of the Christians and Jews in their religions, they deviated from the right path. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no, if you want to say the theoretical point of view, the, the Judaism and Christianity were right, yes, there were right scriptures, but these scriptures were not spread among the Jews and Christians. It was the false editions of the scripture and the books. So we cannot say they were right. No, we cannot say this. Okay, you, you understand the point? So here, this is important to understand also, because this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That already the, the, the right scrolls has, have been, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, f- falsified and fabricated, and they added and removed a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, sentences and verses from these books. And then they are not qualified to be holy books anymore. And we cannot, and even that you will find that like Abdullah ibn Salam here, and even in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like, there were like some, uh, some uh, people like Bahira, for example. His name is Bahira. He's very famous. I'm not sure you know about him or not. Bahira and Nastur also. They were like, and also uh, Waraq ibn Nawfal. He was the, one of the relatives of Sayyidah Khadija. They were what? They were Christian. Okay? They were Christian. But they knew there is some... Prophet is going to be sent at this time. Okay, let's go back again to the uh, to the ayat. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ We said that يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَالْمِثْقَالْ مَا يُعْرَبْ بِهِ ثِقَلُ الشَّيْءِ وَهُوَ مَا يُقَدَّرُ بِهِ الْوَزْنِ وَالذَّرَّةِ هِيَ النَّمْلَ الصَّغِيرَ أَزْبُ السِّدِّ Okay, <coughs> so the meaning here, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى the ulama, they said, this is for the believer. This is for the believer. Only. And the other one is, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَى Who is so ever going to make Adam's weight of evil deed, is going to see it. This is for whom? This is for the believer who did sinful actions and for the non-believer. He is going to see it. Okay? Okay? Yes. But in the previous verse, uh, it says, nas. So, yes, that's nas right. Is not general, yes, you mean here that it's supposedly based on a nas, so it should be all the, all, yeah. all the people. Yeah, that's my question. Yeah, this, this is right, actually, in logic, actually. But the ulama, they said that, yazdurun nas, all the people. But as we said here, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ It is iltifat, that, like addressing the believers only. If you did good thing, you are going to see it. If you did wrong thing or bad thing or evil thing, then you are going to see it. So as if he is addressing like the believers only here. And if you want to take it as something that is generic or general, this is for believers and non-believers, some ulama actually they said that, yes. So, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى Even from the non-believers, if he did something good, then he is going to see it. But he is not going to be rewarded for it. He can see this, but he will not be rewarded for it. Yes, as we said, Abu Talib, the same. He did a lot of things for... So this uh, last word, Yara, it's the same as the one in the previous ayah that is Yaro? Yes. Liyorao. Uh, so it's the same root? Ah, Liyorao, it is from the fa'al. Ara, Rubai, Ara. Ara means that or I let you see. But here, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ 
he it is I will see it is ra'a it is fi'l thulathi the root is three letters here mm -hmm. it is ra'a uh, ra'aytu but araytuka means that I let you see something mm -hmm. okay there is a difference between the two so here yara you are going to see it by yourself but in the previous ayah there is someone is going to let you see it okay mm -hmm. amala and actually here, uh, this is there is one uh, hadith actually that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned with he was with Abu Bakr, and Abu Bakr was eating with Rasulullah and he said that these ayat have been revealed while that Abu Bakr was the the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he asked about that if we are going to make good and bad things we are going to see it, he said. Whenever that you do something good, you are going to see it in dunya. And you are going to have the reward of it in akhirah. And whenever that you see something bad or did something bad in this dunya, you are going to see it in, the, in this dunya. And this is why whenever that we see a calamity, a hardship, a problem, an obstacle, something that's wrong or something that we have did or we have done here. And we did it before, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will to purify us, then we're going to see it in dunya. Okay. So subhanallah, as we said, uh, there is a hadith, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٌ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءَ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءَ صَبَرْ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ نَعْمَاءَ شَكَرْ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءَ صَبَرْ Whenever there is something good happened to him, then he is going to what? To thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to it. And whenever there is something bad happened to him, then he is going to what? To show patience. So this is important. Whenever that you see hardship, patience is something very important. And if you, because again, this is a purification. And subhanallah, if I ask you, what is better for you? To see the punishment in dunya or to see it in akhirah? In dunya, right? Because akhirah, there is something we cannot imagine. Okay, so whenever that we see some disease or some hardship or an obstacle or anxiety or something like this, this is bitter for us. And this is rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why the people and the dhikr, whenever that you have something that you see in dunya, you say alhamdulillah. First of all, alhamdulillah, thanks God for this. Praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. Alhamdulillah, that is not bigger than this. And alhamdulillah, it is in this not in my health, for example, or not in my deen, okay? not in my religion. Okay? So this is why the mu'min always should accept the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, live with it with patience, and to say alhamdulillah. This is why other people, whenever they are being afflicted with a calamity or something, they do not have patience. And some people, they say that, why? Why, I am, I, why am I the person who is being afflicted with this? Why the other person is not? This is the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people say, we never, I never saw happiness in this world. Yeah, yeah, this is also something that is not right. They say that all my life is misery, and I'm miserable. Actually, this is not right. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted, granted you many blessings, but you are not counting. Professor King? Yes? It's very impressive that the scientific terms, okay. the atom, mm -hmm. is it? The Garati. atom, yes. Garati, mm -hmm. in, the, in the religion of the, it's very impressive. Ah, okay. And so you mean that the the atom, the, the atom here is something, okay. Yes. That's that's good, but remember that the atom here it is just an example, okay. It is only an an example, and the meaning is as we said the ant or something like the fiber that you can see in, in, in the sun ray, uh, rays and so on. Is it, is it what, what they intended to do? Such as... Small thing, very small thing. This is the meaning here. Okay? And this is important to understand. The Quran has some terms. Sometimes after 100, 200, 300 years, the terms, <coughs> our understanding for the terms changed. So if we are going to understand, we should go to what? The era and the time of the revelation. What is the meaning of that? Because here in Surah Yusuf, فَجَاءَتْ Sayara. Okay, Sayara. Sayara now in Arabic, it's, car. it's a car. <laughs> really, it means a car. Okay, Mercedes or something. But actually, it does not mean like this in the context. Sayara means a caravan. 
it is qafila. It is, you know, it is some people going with some horses and camels and they are putting their goods and so on. This is the meaning here. Okay? So the meaning should go to the time of Rasulullah and the time of the Arab. They can understand it like in this way. Like, for example, the hour, sa'a. Actually, sa'a. And nowadays, sa'a means that the watch. Okay? This is the watch here. But actually, sa'a in the Quran, the hour, it has the meaning of the day of judgment sometimes. Or sometimes mutlaq al waqt, okay, or some part of the of the time. So we need to understand this. Uh, professor. Yes. When I read the, the when I read the only this this article these sentences. Yes. So can I interpret interpret that? Can I conclude that science science is very was very prosperous in the Islamic dynasty? Yes, but we cannot link this ayah directly with uh, with this. Yes. Uh, this, uh, this, this, uh, he's getting confused, so can we just say that the word Zara means here as a figure of speech? Okay, yes, that's, that's, that's right. I, 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 Professor, he is interested in the, also the scientific aspect of the Quran. And it is also a proven fact that Quran shows many scientific facts. Yes, Which that's... people did not know at that time. Yes. But now even the Zara, you say that people at that time in Arabic, they call Zara, that from the little room they can see the light. Yes. Light the light particle. has some yes. light particles. Those yes. are photons. Yes. So photon even has, is smaller than atom. Yeah. Atom has the weight, but photon does not have any weight. Mm -hmm. So even also yes. Uh, well, I can l let let you know about this. For uh, the atoms here, the meaning, as our brother says, this is yes. We can use it as a figurative speech, something that is, you know, we want to give an example, and this example at the atom means, at the Arab understanding time, it means like the smallest thing, like yes, the fiber, or we can, the smallest ant that you could imagine. But now the atom, here this is the English translation, atom, we have a different configuration of the atom, okay, which is, as I said, uh, the, the, the atom configuration, the electrons and protons and and nucleus and so on. I guess that is because of translation. Yes, this is the translation, yes. yes this is, but there is a lot of indications in the Quran for the scientific facts. We cannot deny this. Okay, and uh, what I want to end with is, you know, uh, this is what we call it targhib or tarheeb uh, in the ayat. And this is the best way, best way for attracting people, for doing good things and bad things. As I said many times, this philosophy, okay, some people they are placing emphasis whenever they are calling people for the right and bright, uh, for the bright, you know, side of whatever the, they are calling for. But here in the Quran, it is always targhib wa tarheeb, means that to attract people by warning them, and in the same time, this is like targhib and targhib, and also to appeal them to go to this place and to do these actions and so on. This is the right way. But if you go only in one thing and say that it is only nice to be in Islam or nice only to be within the Muslims and live peacefully and so on, this is good and right. But again, some people, they are not going to be moved unless that they are alerted and warned that there is something there waiting for them. You should care of. This is the end of this uh, surah. Ah, yes, yes, that's, that's right. <laughs> and actually, this is not right way because Rasulullah did the same. Bashiran wa nadira, always in the Quran, okay? That you are Bashir means that you are giving the glad tidings, wa nadira, and you are giving the warnings for the people. As I said many times, if you say for some people that there is paradise in the, in the, in the day of judgment, they said that, no, you do not want the paradise. I'm living in the paradise here. I do not want anything. So they are not going to be moved with saying paradise. But if you say that you are going to be, you know, you are going to be burned, okay, in a, in a, in a, in a fire and something. Yes, he now will be understand that I should avoid anything bad. This is, this is the human nature and we should understand it. Subhanallah.